Hey everybody, today we're going to go through section 1.3, bed leveling or tramming in Luke Hatfield's help guide. My name's Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. So the first step in this is to go ahead and loosen or lower the Z end stop. The Z end stop is on the left side of the machine and that's this piece right here. You'll see it has two bolts. We're just going to go ahead and loosen it with the small end of the Allen wrench and then we're going to lower it just a little bit. And you can actually loosen it enough so it will lower lower than that rail or if you want to, you can remove it. The next step is to go ahead and in pairs, we're gonna go ahead and tighten all of the knobs, front, the front pair, and then the rear pair. We're gonna tighten them all the way up until they're completely tight, they can't be turned anymore. And just so you know, if you turn it towards the bed like this, that's loosening it toward, towards away from the bed, I'm sorry, is tightening it. There's actually little arrows on my knobs, which is great, but this way would be loosening, this way is tightening. And then what we're gonna do is back them off in pairs, two in the front and then the two in the rear off of four turns. Um, and make sure you work in pairs here. So you want to grab both both wheels and you want to do Four turns just like that and from the back a little more tricky But do it as best you can and make sure you do it in pairs um, And th that's going to give you the best result here so step four asks us to go ahead and disable the stepper motors. So with the machine on, you want to click down on the little round button, go to prepare. So turn it one time to the right, click down, then scroll down till you see disable steppers and go ahead and click that button. Now you've disabled the stepper motors. So step five asks us to manually move the hot end down above the bed in the front left corner. So here's the front left corner. I'm just gonna pull out my bed just a little bit. Then I'm gonna use the Z screw and go ahead and lower it down by twisting that Z screw. And that's step five. In step six, what we're gonna do is take a piece of paper just like this. I take the bottom third, it's a little bit easier to manage, of a piece of copy paper. Then we're gonna go ahead and set it under there. And then we're going to use the Z lead screw and go ahead and lower it down. So we're going to take our piece of paper, slide it under and use the Z lead screw carefully and go ahead and slowly lower it, the nozzle down while you're moving that piece of paper back and forth. Once you catch and you buckle the paper, just ease it off just a little bit. So right there, it's a little too loose, but that just buckles it, just like that. So once you get it, you'll want it so the paper will buckle like this, but if you force it, it will slide under there, just like that. But when you hold the end, the paper buckles. Just a quick note, the Z lead screw is actually the screw right here that goes all the way up the back. You can actually turn the top of it uh, just by spinning it with your fingers. That's what I mean by the Z-lead screw. Steps number 7, 8, and 9, and 10 are all about the Z-end step. So what we're going to do, the Z-end stop, we're going to go ahead and put it back on the rail. Place the end stop on in the rail like this. We're going to move it up until we hear it click. And in my case, it's not far enough down. So what I'm going to have to do is go ahead and 
uh, let's see, there we go. And go ahead and clip that off. And you can make sure it's cleaned up if you want to. There we go. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on the rail, move it up till it clicks, just like that. So I like to hand tighten these first, then go ahead and take your Allen wrench. You know that the sensor in here is pushed down, so it's hitting the X gantry. And just go ahead and tighten that up. So the next thing you wanna do is go ahead and auto home your device. So we're gonna go ahead and click the button on the screen. We're gonna to go to prepare, click the button, and hit auto home. In my case, this is a little bit different because I do have the BL touch, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it does when I do the auto home. Just like that, and it stops when it gets to home. Yours will be a little different if you don't have the BL touch, it should go to the front left of the bed but mine goes to the center with the BL touch. So once your bed is auto homed, we're gonna skip to steps 13 and 14, and then we're gonna come back to step 12, which talks about the uh, alternate method using a thing of theirs file to automatically do this. So step 13, we're gonna go ahead and disable the steppers, just like we did before. As Soon as you do that, you'll hear them kick down. Step 14, we're gonna go ahead and heat the nozzle up to uh, 200 degrees and the bed up to 60 degrees. You always wanna heat the printer up before you level, or in our case, we're tramming the bed is what we're doing. So we're gonna go ahead and go to prepare, and we're gonna scroll down, and we're gonna prepare PLA, preheat PLA, and it'll actually take it to 200 degrees on the nozzle and 60 degrees on the bed. And that's exactly what we're looking for. All right, when your nozzle is heated up to uh, 200 degrees and your bed is at 60 degrees, what we're gonna do, I better double check that. Um, make sure to disable steppers. So we'll just go ahead and disable steppers quick. Then what we're gonna do is move your hot end to the front left side of the bed. So I'm gonna push the bed back and then slide this over like this. And it should be right in the front left. Now if you notice, mine has a little bit of filament coming out of the bottom of the nozzle. And uh, that will affect when you're leveling or tramming your bed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my snips and cut that off. And there we go, not one affected anymore. And we should be ready to go ahead and tram or level the bed. So then what we wanna do is go ahead and take our paper that we used before and we're gonna slide it under. And we're gonna slowly rotate the knob in, uh, we're gonna rotate it this way. We're gonna rotate it out. So we're gonna slowly do that and move your paper back and forth so we're gonna move it until, until it buckles. And make sure it's buckling from grabbing the nozzle, not from hitting your extrusion there. Just like that. So you'll feel a drag in there. So you can loosen it a little by moving it this way. So scrolling the wheel this way loosens it and this way tightens it. But you wanna do it just so you get that just so you get the buckle in your paper, just like that. Then you wanna go ahead and move it to the right front corner of your bed now. Now keep your paper underneath just in case. Sometimes the other side of the bed will be higher and you don't wanna ram your nozzle into the bed. If that happens, go ahead and loosen the uh, knob on the side that you're moving to and it'll drop it down a little for you. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that on all four corners. All right, so once you got the back left done, you wanna go ahead and move everything to the front left corner now. And we'll do that here. Careful, it's hot. About the same spot you were in and double check it. If it 
Mine's a little tight because the other one's moved, so I'm just going to go ahead and loosen it just a little bit. So there we go. Now if I hold on the end, it's going to be buckling just like that. We're going to slowly move it to the other side now. And it's too tight. You see right here, I can't pull the paper out. So we're going to go ahead and loosen that. And that will happen. So I'm going to push it in just so it buckles just to fine tune it a little. Keep the piece of paper under there and go ahead and move it to the back and just double check where you're at. So I'm too tight on the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosen it. And we're good. We're getting a good fold, but I can still move it. You know, it's not completely stuck, but it is giving me a good bend. Move it to the other side, keeping the piece of paper under just in case. So now I'm way too loose on this side. So once I got to the back rear again, I'm way too loose. So I'm going to go ahead and raise that back bed up just a little bit here. So you start to pinch and then you get the paper that will buckle like this. But you can still force it like this if you want to. But holding the end, it'll buckle. So once you went around your bed two times, what you want to do is go ahead and cool down everything. So we're going to go ahead and go to prepare. Scroll down. And quick cool down. Everything should start cooling down now and you'll be good. Something to note, uh, the next step, you can actually slice a five point test to try or maybe a live level G code that uh, gives you a measurable first layer and then you can finally adjust it real slowly with those knobs. Something to note also that the bed knob is 0 0.04 millimeters per 1 16th of a turn when you turn those knobs. So you just need to move them very, very slowly. So there is step number 12. We're going to go back to that now. This is an alternative method. It uses a thinger, Thingiverse file that you can find in Luke's guide and I'll link it below. It'll take the hot end above the bed coming down to zero at each corner and then lifting up and then going to the next corner and coming back down to zero. What you want to do is uh, first you want to start by heating up your bed like I've done already. You want to make sure your SD card is initialized. So go ahead and click one time, scroll down, initialize your SD card. Then what you're going to want to do is uh, make sure you're heated up and you're going to want to print from the SD card. You're going to go ahead and choose which one you want to use. And you're going to go ahead and select it. So once you selected that file, it'll actually take automatically and bring um, your hot end to the front left corner. Then you're going to want to go ahead and put your piece of paper under here. And you can do this just like we did before. Go until it buckles. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is click your button that says click to resume. When you do that, it'll lift up and take you to the next point. I like to keep my piece of paper under it just in case. So then you're gonna go ahead and slide your piece of paper under, lifting your bed until the piece of paper buckles, just like we did before. Just like that. Click the button again. It'll take you to the next. Make sure your paper's under there. Then you're gonna want to adjust your bed again so your paper buckles, just like that. Now we got a little buckle, hit the button again. It'll take us to the next point. Always keeping your paper underneath. And 
adjust it from there. Too far. Just like that. Click it again. It'll take you back to the front. And then you'll want to fix, just in case, there we go. You want to adjust it just so it, you can slide it and it just buckles like that. And then it'll take you back to the back again and it'll go around completely twice. So as soon as you're back at the front right side for the second time, when you click to resume this time, it's actually going to start printing. It's going to do a test pattern that's about 0.2 millimeters thick. It's going to go all the way around the bed and then it's going to do four, uh, actually five. So now it'll start printing and you go to the front right and if everything goes right, you should see it sticking to the bed. If not, go ahead and loosen uh, or tighten your knobs while it's printing to get it nice and stuck. You want it nice and stuck just like this. And for your first layer, that should be great. If it's coming loose and not sticking to the bed, that means you're still too far from, the nozzle's still too far from the bed. And you're gonna need to go ahead and raise the bed just a little bit. In our case, we seem to be doing good. So once it's done doing that, it's going to go ahead and make five total test circles or test patterns. It's going to draw three circles and then fill them in. And this will allow you to make sure that your bed is adjusted correctly and that the tramming is done and you can start printing. So when it's done, you'll end up with five test patterns along with a perimeter, just like this. You can use this to measure thickness. It all should be about two millimeters thick. Also, if you look at the disc, you can use it to see your first layer. Now what you wanna do is get a great first layer like this, make sure everything's two millimeters thick and you can measure that and adjust your knobs accordingly and you're good to go. Well, there you go. You should be leveled or trammed, as we like to call it. Please like the video, subscribe if you like what you saw, and click the little bell if you want to be notified for the next videos that are coming out soon. You guys have a great day, and happy printing.